In the small town of Ocean Springs, Mississippi, a group of 15-year-old friends were planning to celebrate the last day of their sophomore year of high school at a local park on May 26, 1994. In our society, unfortunately, alcohol has a reputation of being a very, very safe drug. It's consumed very widely. However, it is not a safe drug. Um, it is possible to die from drinking uh, large quantities of alcohol. Among the group of friends there that day was Mike Michelle. We just, like, decided, hey, man, what if we, like, get a bunch of, like, whiskey and just, like, take shots? We're just all happy. We thought we were going to get drunk, you know, have a few good laughs and everything. Next day, everything will be all right. But it didn't work out that way. Josh Platt was one of the drivers. I got to be the poor, I guess, because I didn't want to do it. I didn't want to drink. I knew they weren't going to handle it too well. After I took my fifth shot, I had to puke. And I quit because I just didn't feel like playing anymore. I didn't even want to do it because I don't feel comfortable like drinking from my girlfriend because I don't want to make a, a fool out of myself in front of her, you know? I remember Mike says, no, I don't want to do this anymore. He goes, I don't want to get drunk. Y'all are out of hand, man. Around 6.30, Amanda Stringfellow came by to see her boyfriend, Josh's twin brother, Jacob Platt. Jake and I have been dating about eight months. That's very serious. He's a big part of my life. It's like everything I do concerns him, I guess. They were pretty hammered. I didn't think they were being cool or whatever they thought they were doing. As they kept drinking, they kept getting louder and crazier. And just started running around. Everybody was ripped. I mean, they were gone. My brother, Jacob, and Adam, the two littlest guys there, they were right in there. A couple of us had to carry Jacob out there because he couldn't really stand up by himself. I didn't think anything of it at the time. They, like, had two empty half gallons, and I was like, man, they drunk it all. And it was, like, quick, too. They did it probably in about 30 minutes, maybe less than that. Hey, Mike, we're going to your house. Give me the bottle, man. Give me the bottle. Give me the bottle. Hey, the bottle. The bottle. I got shotgun. I got shotgun. We were going to put all the drunk guys at Mike's house, let them sober up, where really they wouldn't bother anybody, I guess. Tommy McNabb and another friend also decided to go by Mike's house that evening. At first, I thought there was going to be a good party there. <laughs> But when I got there, it was totally different from that. Um, it was kind of ugly and just, I don't like people being that drunk. What are we going to do now? Well, we got to stick around and babysit these guys. They finally just lay down trampoline and just passed out. I'm just glad they're passed out. We thought they'd just wake up later, you know, and be okay. A half hour later, Tommy and some of the others got back from getting something to eat. Sorry about that. I didn't like this. Oh, man, it's his. Hey, help me get him off, man. Grab his legs. I had somebody else help me get Jacob off the trampoline and set him down on the ground. Hey, you all right? He looked really bad. I mean, he looked almost like he was dead. His body was just really limp. Come on, man. man. Jake. He's gone, man. Adam. Adam. And I just kind of got really scared, you know, because he just looked like he hey, quit breathing and everything. Come come on, Adam. Come on. I just started freaking out. I didn't know what to do. Help! Somebody come over here! At that point, I really got scared. Just playing some stupid little game with drinking had turned into all this. Adam. He didn't respond to anything that we were doing. He just kind of laid there. Come on, Adam. It was bad. That's probably the scariest moment of my life. I'll call 911. Somebody said, call 911. So I went inside and called.
Josh's and Jacob's mom, Julia Platt, was also called. There's a group of people in the front yard, and I saw somebody laying on the ground, so that's when I left my lights on so they could see. Wake up. He's in the back. Wake up, Adam. Adam. Come on, Adam. Come on, Adam. Adam. Jacob. He was white as a ghost, just, just pale, 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 and absolutely motionless. I thought, I wish somebody would come back here and tell me what, because I don't know what to do. The first help to arrive was Ocean Springs Police Captain William Coombe. There was one boy who was unconscious and he was being held in a sitting position. I checked to make sure that he was breathing and went around the back of the house. There was a second boy that was completely passed out and he just looked bad. He's not responding. He's not responding. I was afraid that that one of them would in fact stop breathing. And die. I could do CPR on one, but I can't do CPR on two. All I could do is wait for the ambulance to arrive. Within six minutes of the call, AMSERV units got to the scene. Once I got a good look at him, I knew who he was. I've known him ever since I joined the police department because I've worked with his mother. I did not really want to tell her, but I had to. Uh, I knew she would be terribly upset. Fifteen-year-old Adam Wilkerson and Jacob Platt were taken to Ocean Springs Hospital, where Adam's mother, Chief of Police Carolyn Frazier, was waiting. I've seen a lot of people dead during my career, and they both looked as if they had expired. One of the leading causes of fatalities in alcohol poisoning is respiratory failure. Alcohol is very rapidly absorbed by the body, usually within 30 minutes, 30 minutes to an hour. Emergency physician Darrell Barksdale took over their care. Adam was extremely critical. He was just moments from death. The paramedics reported that he had indeed stopped breathing and they were uh, bagging him to force air in into his lungs and uh, we knew that there was no way that we could get the alcohol out of his system. As comatose as Adam was, I was extremely concerned that there was a chance this young man may not make it. Critical care anesthesiologist James Corder was also a member of the medical team fighting to save their lives. The second young man, he was making more respiratory effort than Adam was, however, it was still woefully inadequate uh, to support life. Now, right now, we've got to... It was like I lived in a dream world. He was dying, but yet I wasn't going to admit he was dying. Technically, professionally, I know exactly what occurred. Emotionally, I was a mother. Adam? It was just cross your fingers and say that prayer and uh, let time go by. It was a very long night for all of us. Adam? I wanted to grab him and hold him and, and make things better. And I couldn't make things better. I couldn't make things any better. We have a little saying among ourselves. He says, have I had my hug today? And I said, no, Jacob. I hadn't, I hadn't you know, had a chance to give you your hug today. And, um, I tried to, but he was, um, he was so hooked up, I couldn't get to him to really hug him. Throughout the night, the condition of both teenagers slowly improved. Two days later, they were well enough to be released. Tests taken at the hospital revealed both young men had blood alcohol levels more than twice the legal limit. Jacob Platt never imagined their partying could have such serious consequences. If I had been laying in that yard five minutes more, I would be dead. I knew drinking could kill you behind the wheel of a car, but I've never heard of people dying from alcohol poisoning. I have a whole life ahead of me, and I'm blue in one day, just about. Especially a mother that's a chief of police. <laughs> alcohol poisoning is very easy to get. It can sneak up on you very quickly. You may not even realize you're dying. 
I want other teenagers to know that if any of their friends get drunk, they should stay with them and not leave them because that's the worst thing you can do. Even though people say that you're just going to like pass out and be okay and wake up, it might not be it. You might die. I got to confess, it was me. I believe that the true heroes in this were the individuals that activated the 911 system. I would estimate that another 10-minute delay would have meant the difference between attending funerals and starting school this year. There is no way that I could pay back the rescue team or the emergency doctors or the ICU staff for what they've done. There is, there is no payback for a child's life. <laughs> I want people my age to know that you, know, you have your whole life ahead of you. I mean, you can go out and have a good time without having alcohol. And, uh, you know, just be careful. Adam Wilkerson has also changed as a result of the incident. I realized how lucky I am to be alive, and I learned if you drink to drink responsibly and not to get out of control. Don't play any games. Really, no winner. <laughs> <laughs>